Hey folks, it's Nick over at Outdoor Theory, and today I filmed a quick video on how to tie a hare's ear nymph uh, for fly fishing. Now, my intent is not for my channel to be a fly fishing channel. Um, it's about you know sharing tips and tricks for people uh, who are interested in the outdoors. But for me, I started really heavily fly fishing a couple years ago, although I fished my whole life. And when I started fly fishing, I realized that I probably enjoy the tying more than anything else. Um, I'm by no means an expert. Um, there's plenty of folks out there on YouTube that are experts at fly tying that have really great in-depth videos. Um, so this is really meant more for the beginner or someone who's never tried fly tying before or who was thinking about it. Um, it's something that everybody can do. You, uh, and one of the things that I was intimidated about before I started was, uh, you know, that most of the people I came across were experts and didn't seem that um, relatable to me or that they, I didn't really understand what they were talking about. So I try to keep this video very simple and basic um, and I'm under the weather so you're going to hear me sniffling and, and I apologize about that but on days that I'm not feeling well or days that I'm kind of confined to the house, tying flies is one of the things I like to do especially now it's January, it's the middle of the winter so it's a great time to uh, start building up that fly box. So I hope you enjoy it and if you do hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, share this video because uh, it's all about learning, it's all about you know, getting inspired to try something new. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to get started here. Uh, the fly we're going to tie is a hare's ear nymph. I'm going to tie it in a size 16. And you can see I already have a size 16 hook in the vise. And I do a little different twist in the color that I tie this nymph and that works well for me on my streams. And what I do is I tie it in a dark brown um, with uh, a copper bead and a copper rib. Where traditionally you might, you're going to use a gold bead and a gold rib on this fly. I use a copper. I, I live in New Jersey and uh, the fishing pressure is pretty heavy here in the streams. And I feel it just gives it something a little bit different uh, to, that the fish maybe don't see all the time. And uh, so we'll get started and I'll go step by step and... I'll try to link up photos of the materials that I'm using as we go along so you get a better idea uh, of, of what I'm using to tie the fly here. And this is a great first fly to tie um, if you're new to fly tying. And I am by no means an expert, but I feel like I can get the job done in basic flies and I have success with it. So first thing you want to do is get your hook in the vise and get the bead on the hook. Uh, you can look up other information on the best ways to do that. It, it's really just sliding the, the bead onto the hook. Step two is you're going to want to put some lead wire onto the, onto the hook. And that's just going to give the fly a little bit of weight and help it get down to where the fish are. So you just take your lead wire and you're going to wrap this around the hook. And I like to go around, you know, seven, eight times, nine times, and then just pinch it off. And what I do is I just clean up this little tag in here real quick. Kind of consolidate that. Now, what you want to do is get this lead up behind that bead. So I use a little Zappa Gap. You could use super glue if you don't have Zappa Gap. You can use any kind of just quick drying adhesive. What I do is I take a little dab of this. And just put a little bit on the hook. Now, you'll also find and fly tying that less is more most of the time uh, you don't need to glob glue on you don't need to overdub things just less is more now I push that up behind the bead and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this little tag here and just fold it around with my big fat fingers and get that tightened up behind there now so now we're ready to start uh, the process of tying the fly the first step is take your thread. Now I'm going to use a uh, brown uh, uni thread and a 6-0 I believe. And you're going to just wrap this around the hook 10-12 times and then snap the tag end off with the other hand. And then what I like to do right here real quick is go back up into the lead and then create a little ramp where that lead ends just to make a smooth transition on the fly. Just 
just like that. Now what you're going to do is you're going to tie in your copper rib. And this is a BR copper. That's the size of the, the copper wire. And I'm just going to lay it alongside the hook and wrap it around. And then what I like to do is have that come out on the opposite side of the hook or the hook that's facing the side of the hook that's facing the camera right now and that'll become more evident later as to why so now you get your thread at the back of the hook and I'm really right above the where the hook point would be or the hook barb would be I'm sorry and now you're gonna tie in your pheasant tail now what I do is I use a brown dyed pheasant tail and I try to get about eh, 8 to 12 strands off the feather snip that off just get it with the, the, the tips just relatively aligned and what I'll do is I'll take this in one hand and what I want to do is I, I don't want a long tail I want to have it about the 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 gap in the hook I tend to run them a little longer just because that's me and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tie this in to my start point down here so I got the copper wire and the end of that pheasant tail coming out at the same point. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pheasant tail and I'm going to wrap it up the hook. Now as you wrap it, you're going to see it's going to start to travel and I'll just correct it along the way. Other people probably have better techniques on how to do this. But this is what I do. So you want to get that pheasant tail to come out now right behind that bead. And then I work my thread back down the, the length of the hook. Back to, the, to where the tail starts. So the next thing I, I do is I take some squirrel fur. And I'm using a squirrel spiky dubbing. And I'm just going to take the tiniest pinch that I can get out of the package. What you do is you dub your, your line here. Now take some experience to think to realize how much or how little you need to put on the line but you just want a nice thin noodle I'm gonna have this noodle probably be about two inches long but nice and thin you don't need too much and I'm gonna now take this and wrap this up the fly starting at the tail and go right up the length now when you're using a brown thread and a brown fly it gives you a little bit of uh, um, leeway there but now when I get up to the bead I'm gonna go back to the point where I want the the front half of the, of the, uh, or the body of the fly to, to end and the tail of the fly to begin and I'm just gonna let my my uh, line rest there now this is a rotary vise and I could use the rotary vise to wrap the uh, the rib up the tail but not everyone's going to have a rotary vise, so I'm just going to do this by hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rib, and like I said, down this is ending at the side of the fly facing the camera. I'm going to opposite wrap this rib up the fly. And I'm going to go up just past the point where I want that body to start. Now, I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to wrap this over that rib. And what I'll do is I'll take my thread and reverse it using the wire as an anchor and go back over the top again. That's going to anchor that wire nicely onto the fly. And I'm just going to take the wire and helicopter it till it snaps off. So now we have a nice clean break on that wire. So now this step is going to take your pheasant tail here and you're going to fold it back and wrap it on. And what I do is I kind of wrap back over where I ended that rib and anchor it down. Now we need to get a little more squirrel fur. And when I say the tiniest bit I mean like the smallest amount that you can pinch. 
and you're going to dub that onto the thread. And you're just going to give that a couple wraps around the hook and then behind the bead again. Now you're going to take your pheasant tail, fold it forward, and you're going to wrap over the top of it to anchor it down. And go over it twice. And I like to go in front of it twice and then over the top again. And that's really going to anchor those pheasant tail fibers down so that you can come in with your scissors, give it a little snip, and that trims those fibers. Now you're going to take your whip finishing tool, okay, and you're going to whip finish the fly. Now when I was learning to, fly, to, to tie, this was the hardest part for me. But I also used to do it by hand, and I would say that this is one of the first tools that I picked up to accomplish this task. It really made a big difference. Now you're just going to take your scissors or, or razor, cut the tag end off there. So we're almost done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a UV clear fly finish to coat the wing case of the fly and give it a little more realistic look and it's also going to help cement these fibers down that we just wrapped over the, the pheasant tail so hopefully this isn't all dried out and if it is I'll just open it up it has been a while since I've tied here we go And this is a pretty thick, or viscous material, but I like to dab it in there, onto the bead, and over those pheasant tail fibers. It makes a nice little case. You just take a UV light, and just give it a nice little UV cure. You can do this in the sun. The sun also works. But a little UV light on there will help harden that case up. And underwater it looks like a little shininess to it or maybe a little air bubble. It just adds a little realism. And what you can do at the end is take a little piece of Velcro and just kind of fluff the fly up a little bit. It pulls some of that dubbing out adds to a little bit to the quote unquote bugginess of the fly gives appearance of more, maybe more legs on the fly and that's it now this fly here I, I probably use this fly or a variation of this fly different sizes different colors probably almost half the time I'm in a river and the reason why is I feel that it really replicates a, a lot of different types of nymphs in the water reasonably well so it's a great way when you do get to a river to, to, if you're trying to figure out what they're feeding on, it's a great way to do that now. I mean, before when I started fly fishing, I thought that 90% of fly fishing was dry flies and uh, fishing on top. But in my experience, I do much better nymphing. Also, I, I usually fish in the morning, and it seems like nymphing in the morning does better. But like I said, I, I, I kind of read the, the river when I get there, and... and I would say that most times when I go to a river, this is the fly that produces the best for me um, because it replicates a wide variety of nymphs in the water. So give it a try. I think this is a nice, simple fly to tie. I think it's a great way to start. And uh, leave comments and, and, and your opinions if you've, you know, obviously fly fishing, there's a lot of different ways to, to, to do this. So like if you have, you know, tips that you think the viewers would uh, enjoy, leave a comment. And, and if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Like I said, it's all about learning. And, and I just wanted to share this little tip to, for a beginner, someone who's just maybe starting out in their fly fishing experience. Okay, folks, so I hope you got some value out of that video. It was just a quick, simple, how to tie a fly. Uh, a, f a great first fly to try. Uh, so if you're if you've never tried it before, I would suggest like doing a little research and and getting out there and 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 doing a little fly fishing. It's a great sport. I have a lot of fun doing it. So if you have any questions, comments, please leave them in the comment section. I'm more than happy to answer them for you. Thank you for watching.